Welcome to my channel, fellow Rotorheads. As some of you may have seen in a prior video, I was having some difficulty with my VR headset made by Vario. It became unusable after about a year and a half, and they refused to fix it or replace it. Needless to say, Vario has decided that providing service to the general public is not in their interest as a business. After considering several alternatives for VR headsets, I ended up going with a Pimax Crystal. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and how that's going. Now you may recall that in the video where I was talking about the Vario, I was describing the field of view to be something like wearing a scuba mask. That is still true with the Pimax Crystal, it's just that the scuba mask is a little wider than the arrow. Now in consideration of my experience at the Hellasim simulator facility, it does seem that the widest field of view all the way out to your ears does add a lot of value to flying a helicopter in the sense of stability and awareness. And no VR headset currently offers anything like that. If I could just speculate for a moment and consider what it would be like if VR headset manufacturers added a full wraparound screen all the way to the edges of your vision and just use low resolution imaging out to the sides because you can't see in detail to the sides anyway. How much that would add to the flying experience just to have this side peripheral vision even if it's a little blurry. Unfortunately, I think that only adds value in flight simulation, and flight simulation is only a fraction of the VR market. So I doubt that that particular idea is on the immediate horizon. An interesting thing is that while the Pimax Crystal feels about twice as heavy as the Vario Aero, it actually feels good on my head because the weight distribution is better. I don't mind the extra weight because I don't have all the weight pressing on my face because the rear mounted battery on the Pimax Crystal helps balance the weight. Additionally, there are a couple of headbands across the top that help support the Pimax Crystal on the top of your head like a proper helmet as opposed to the Vario which uses a headband approach to fasten the weight to the front of your face. Overall, it's just a more ergonomically designed, comfortable fit. The Pimax comes with two batteries and a charger, so you can charge one battery while you're using the other one. Swapping the batteries is not particularly pleasant. The mechanical interface is a little bit stiff, but I discovered that if you manage the batteries, you don't actually have to swap them. You can just turn off the headset when you're not using it, and it will charge automatically through your USB connection. I find that charging overnight to be sufficient for a normal day's usage. Pimax uses built-in cameras for its head tracking, and there's pros and cons to that. I like the fact that you don't need base stations, that makes it somewhat less expensive than the Vario, for example. Also, the base stations are mechanical devices and they can fail, which is another, again, another point of failure. I'm not thrilled about that. One of my base stations failed and I had to get it replaced. A con of using internal tracking is that it's not 100% accurate in all circumstances. It can drift a little bit if you're doing something strange like looking out the window or looking down. It can start to feel like it's moving a little bit, but in a normal circumstance where you're looking ahead within the cockpit and you're looking around within the cockpit environment, it's 100% accurate. So I think it's a pretty good trade-off for getting rid of the potentially failure-prone external base stations. An interesting feature of the internal tracking cameras is the ability to turn on see-through mode so that you can see your surroundings with the headset on. The view is black and white and very grainy so it's well short of readable monitor resolution. But you can see your hands on the keyboard and your monitor and I find it helpful to turn on so when I reach for my joystick the cable doesn't accidentally knock over my drink onto my keyboard. Now we're all familiar with the Crystal's big feature, the high quality is spheric lenses and they do live up to their billing. When you have the headset seated right, the clarity sweet spot extends across your view. Now kind of wandering into the negative aspects of Pimax, there are some oddball unforced errors. Among them is laughably poor documentation. Because the headset has two USB cables, Pimax provides this unusual powered USB hub it has four ports, all of them inputs, none of them seemingly outputs. It doesn't tell you which ones you're supposed to connect to. 
and there is a specific way to connect to it. I've tried multiple ways and only one of them seems to work. They give you this USB to USB-C cable. What's it for? Are you supposed to connect the hub to your computer with that? I don't know. Doesn't work. Are you supposed to use that to connect the powered hub to the charging station for the spare battery? Maybe. The documentation doesn't tell you either way. The only way I was able to make the hub work at all was to use their double-ended USB cable using it to connect my computer to the port next to the power jack on the USB hub. The headset's USB cables can then be plugged into any of the remaining ports on the long side of the hub. This is useful in consolidating the cables and saving you a spare USB port on your computer. Except, it doesn't work. While doing this video and planning on talking about the crystal's eye tracking function, I discovered the eye tracking didn't seem to be working anymore. After a day and a half of researching, installing, uninstalling, and reconfiguring, I discovered Pimax's own powered hub prevents my computer from seeing the eye tracking function in the headset. So I'm back to using two ports on my computer, which allows it to work fine. All this without any support or indication from the documentation. Even if you get to that point, you still won't be able to use the headset because you get a mixed reality error in Microsoft Flight Simulator if you try to switch to the VR view. It's not immediately obvious that you need to download and install Pimax XR, link in the description below, or load up Steam VR in order to get it to work. Again, with little in the way of clear documentation on the installation and configuration process. And really, after my Vario experience, all these setup issues are kind of alarming and unpleasant coming off the backside of a prior malfunctioning headset. Not knowing which button to press, which wires to connect, what software to install, encountering misstep after misstep invokes a creeping worry that you have yet another malfunctioning headset on your hands. But once you get all these issues squared away, yes, the eye tracking works great and it's nice to have extra frames per second because the GPU is not working so hard to paint high resolution pixels in your peripheral vision. This eye tracking function concept is a similarly low performance impact idea to what I mentioned earlier about having extended low resolution imagery way out to the sides of your vision as a flight sim specific enhancement function. And finally, one last minor complaint. The headset does have its own audio and it works well enough. Unfortunately, there's no convenient way to switch the flight sim audio to the headset while leaving all the other audio sources untouched. It switches and it stays that way until you go back into the settings to change it back. It's kind of annoying to start watching a video and then hear the audio coming out of the headset instead of your speakers. So in summary, is this a good headset? Yes, yes it is. It has its issues. But for the main features anyone would buy it for, absolutely, it does what it's supposed to do. The fact that it's not as polished a product as you could hope for speaks to the type of market this is. It has, for the most part, been a niche market for the early adopters. This new Apple headset being promoted may or may not take off. And honestly, given how technology has changed society over the years, I really don't think it would be good for the world if everyone started wearing headsets the way everyone now has a modern cell phone. It would be great for Flight Simmer, certainly, to have unbelievable technology make it to our corner of the world, but I think it would be better if we continue to just play in our own fringe market with our strident but imperfect tech vendors. I think in the spectrum of what's available, considering technological capability, quality, overall support, longevity, market viability, and price point, the Pimax Crystal is at or near the top. So that's my wrap up for the Pimax Crystal. If you're in the market for a VR headset, I do recommend it. Unlike my specific Vario experience, it's not a polished turd. Rather, the Pimax Crystal is, as far as I can tell, an unpolished gem. I look forward to your comments and questions. And until next time, may the feeling of that rotor wash over you.